is on the screen. Because you have to, with Zoom, you have to go, yes, I want video. Yes, yes I, I want, want audio. audio. I know. Separately. Oh, slow. there Hello. we go. Hello. Welcome. How are you doing, Todd? Doing good. Let me mute that. And here we go. You guys hear me okay? There we go. Yep. I can hear you. I can see you. That's what we need. Uh, welcome to Atari Age Day. And we're so happy that your new game is out. Dragon's Cash. Awesome. And uh, so we're going to do an unboxing of it. A puzzle of dragons and jewels. So uh, while we're doing the, the unboxing, tell us what is it with dragons and why do you feature them heavily in your games? They're awesome and they're very versatile. It's a, I mean, you know, yeah, who, who doesn't like dragons? Who doesn't think dragons are awesome? Um, part of it was there was a, an old silly meme that was like make an Atari game using the first letters of your, your first and last, you know, first letters of your first and last name. And ah. uh, mine turned out to be uh, Dragon Racer. Um, so that's kind of the, oh. that's, I think, I mean, you guys, you guys played it way back when, um, there, I made a little dragon racer game for the, for the 2600 that I used to kind of learn to, uh, kind of learned how to program in Atari basic and make an Atari game. And then it kind of decided yeah. a lot of these I do to kind of learn something or kind of own a skill. I, I'm a professional game designer, but this is kind of fun to go back into and again, learn stuff in each game. I kind of try to learn a new thing. I try to. In this case, with the, kind of this informal dragons trilogy, with um, cash, dragons cash is is the columns like you know puzzle versus puzzle drop game. Uh, dragons descent yeah. is a like rogue like dungeon crawler, um, yeah. and then uh, dragons havoc, which is uh, coming up as a shmup like scrambler uh, or gradius. Yes, very much fun. We played that fairly recently. That yeah. was a lot of fun, and that's and that's still a work in progress. But you're you're getting. Uh, through it pretty quickly definitely and then that yeah and uh dragon's descent for this uh, is out for the 2600 but it is imminent we're just actually uh, like like everybody's saying we're making the manual and box art right now and i'm doing some final touches on it but yeah looking forward to that that one is very fun and very challenging uh especially on the harder levels that's for sure it's uh uh yeah a very fun uh dungeon crawler but you're a dragon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Instead of a guy fighting a dragon, you're a dragon in, in the game. I mean, it's your ear. Um, you can be anything in, in, you know, in a digital video game. So, you know, like. Why not be a dragon? Who wouldn't want to be a dragon? So this uh, is great uh, looking manual. It's got some dragons arguing in the front, front cover there. Um, so who did the artwork uh, for the box? Uh, Benedict Sheffer. Um who uh, it's again really really neat artist said like i uh, would do you need somebody to do the uh, you know ar artwork and I, I was kind of in the middle of a bunch of stuff so i'm like please this is this would be amazing and yeah this yeah. helped a lot um oh it's great great artwork very cartoony dragons there mm -hmm. they look so good especially in the back there one has defeated the other <laughs> one's all burnt up that is so good and uh you've got the uh kind of old school uh, banners at the top there. Very nice, very on theme. Really great job on the manual. Yeah, we, we, oh, we, they're both playing the 7800 there in one of the cartoons. That is so cute. <laughs> yeah, for these, I mean, again, this is me kind of having fun. And, you know, in a lot of ways, these are almost exercises. I mean, I try to make the best game I can, but they're, you know, in this case, I'm, I'm learning a lot technically. And I try to make a lot of new games, but this one was like, okay, what if I just took the 7800. I I was at a old party with a, a party a long time ago with, with a friend of a uh, friend of mine. We were playing a bunch of like Tetris and columns on a couple different platforms, and I was like, you know, the 7800 doesn't really have one of these, and it kind of needs one. Ah, that's that's very smart. Uh, filling a niche for something. It's like, well, you need a a, a puzzle matching game for the 7800. Mm -hmm. Why not go for it and make it dragons? <laughs> And the graphics on the title screen of the interlacing, I guess metal work it probably is. Exactly. They yeah, like, they're kind of. A, they look like kind of door knockers, but two door knockers connected with um, some some metal railing. It is it's gorgeous, and the flashing colors. Yeah. Yeah, and a lot of different uh, different modes from the title screen. You know, you can play head to head, and yes. which is you know like a straightforward columns, you know columns clone. But then you can have you can play for you know. Uh, Kind of a race mode to see how fast you can complete a certain number of um, uh, yep. points, and then head to head, I actually played with adding new uh, 
kind of a new, similar to a puzzle fighter uh, battle dynamic, where you kind of build up gems, and then, but it's a balance where you you get more you vulnerable. Attack each other. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's it's great. Uh, a fun fun head to head because, especially when you're you've you've thwarted the other person, and they're like, oh my god, come on, and they're, they're trying to <laughs> try to finish off a column, and you just drop garbage on them. It's it's so much fun. And, and, and thank you for making a two-player game. There are definitely never enough of those. Uh, that was my other, like, thing to learn. Whenever, you know, whenever you're making a new game, especially, if, you know, making a retro game, it's like, okay, what do I actually, what do I want to learn technically? What's my the thing I want to challenge? And this had a couple of little things, but one was, like, I want to make a two-player simultaneous game for, the, for an Atari platform. And, mm. you know, you have to structure you have to, it. You know, it's easier going in saying, I go in and make a two-player. If you're normal stem with the game you're like eh, let's make it two player it's going to be much much well, harder oh yeah definitely yeah it's good to have a game plan i mean you can add things at the end but uh, it's much harder to shoehorn them in uh, especially given you know memory constraints or you know things like that mm -hmm. um, yeah really great two-player game um so despite the similar theme throughout your line of dragon games and all being dragons in them uh, your genres are incredibly diverse, actually. And I guess that speaks to you learning and, and teaching yourself different things. Like you've got, you know, Dungeon Crawler, like we went over, a shoot 'em up uh, a shmup, a, a racing game, and now a, pu a puzzle matching game. Um, are these some of your favorite genres, or are they merely just, you know, learning experiences like like you said there was no puzzle game let's make a puzzle game i mean they're all they're all genres i i generally kind of like um i mean that said yeah the uh, i mean to be honest, i've done a lot of work i love doing experimenting with procedural content generation uh roguelikes and yeah. such so dragon's ascent which is kind of yes. you know the one i've been I, I i did a lot of focus on me mechanically is one of my favorites in terms of just i was able to kind of fit thousands of maps you know, in different kinds of enemies and behaviors into, you know, 16 kilobytes and later 48 kilobytes. Um, but yeah, that, that said, like, I wanted to branch out a little bit, like, you know, um, Dragon Racer was just me like, I, I, yeah, like, I haven't really done a racing game, let alone one on the 2600. What would that look like? Um, and same thing with this is, you know, I've, you know, I, I do, I'm kind of one of those weird people who likes columns more than Tetris, um, even though I, I do like Tetris, but, uh, <laughs> but I was like, yeah, okay, how hard would that be to program? And, you know, and what would I learn doing this? And, yeah, it was kind of fun technically learning lessons on how, you know, how to make the block drop, how to make cascades happen, um, and just try to make it fun to have, you know, the controls feel right. And uh, But, yeah, I yeah. think a lot of it is, you know, going in, I, I, I like to learn things. And I, in this case, I want to branch out. I want to try new things, and this is a good domain to try them in, I think. Yeah. So, uh is there anything next on the horizon that you want to challenge yourself with? And, and you know, are you smitten with the 7800 now? Or, or are, you, are you willing to go back to this 2600? Or, or you want to branch out and go wild on the 5200 or something or an 8-bit? I have a couple ideas. And I have, you know, there's kind of, I was kind of posted informally on the forums, like, this is like the Dragons trilogy, but, you know, there's... Right. Um, you know, it's funny. More dragon games to be had. <laughs> Maybe, or you know, there's other mythical creatures. Um, yeah, again, I don't, you know, don't want to commit to something specifically, but I have, I have ideas. You know, one quixotic quest was to try to port things like something like Dragon's Descent was already on the 2600 and the 7800, but I might try, you know, trying to port it to a couple other systems again to kind of learn. Uh -huh. It's it's a simple enough game that you can kind of port it. If you can port it to the 2600, you can kind of get it running on just about anything. So it was. It's almost kind of right. my, I want to learn a new platform. Let's see if I can port this game to it. Um, That's smart because you know the logic already behind the game. So it's more about learning the system rather than learning how to program the game itself. So that's a really smart way of, of, of getting used to a new uh, console. Right. It's really good. And it's simple enough. You don't have to worry like, oh, do I have, does this support scrolling? Oh, crap, I have to write a whole scrolling system. Or, you know, it's, it's you know, I, I like to think it's fun, but it's also, I mean, it's meant to be simple. Um, that said, you know, it's, I like the 2600. The 7800 is kind of, it's weird because it's, it's, it's one of those platforms. I know some people said this about 5200, where if you're programming the 2600, you're like, crap, I wish I had like, you know, 
more colors or yes. more sprites or more something. And you, and what you end up describing right. is the 7800. Um, so, right. Um, you know, and that's... And I've, and, and I've seen a lot of people move to the 7800 from the 2600. You know, like, like our next uh, person on our list, Money Funster, who's now uh, gone crazy with the 7800. <laughs> when it's here, yeah, if you're, you know, the 2600 is a lot of fun to work with, but yeah, this is suddenly, like, it feels like martial arts training with weights. Suddenly you can take the weights off, and especially with uh, with Batari Basic, like, again, uh, for Porting Dragon's Descent, I I just had to change a little bit about how the graphics work, but the logic was pretty much copy-paste. And it was, it was, it was fun kind of upgrading from there. Um, you know, so yeah, it's, you know, it it's it's a it's a fun system and with you know the it's the thing that you kind of miss maybe is 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 audio is always what you know it's kind of it's a police right. deal, but there's space you, there's space you can play a lot with the TIA the the, the TIA chip um, there's been surprising uh, amounts of talent that have been able to pull great tunes and sounds that you would never guess it's the TIA yeah um, like look at the I didn't I don't know there's tons of them uh Popeye yeah um that's just astounding and there's many many examples yeah, and there's... Of, of people just just destroying what people's preconceptions of the TIA have been you know and the, the 700 gives you more space to play with that you know and you know things like the pokey or you know various other chips are possibilities and you know that's you think about what's on the horizon all of the all these games right now have been single bank games for the 700 and been looking for. I have a couple of hazy ideas right now that would be. I mean, you know, if I had, if I knew going in that I could would use multiple banks, you know, what would have, what would have. How, how big is a bank on the seventy eight hundred? It's a little complicated because they're. If you use one bank, you have forty eight kilobytes. But if you use multiple banks, okay. each bank is thirty two kilobytes, and then you have a sixteen kilobyte like one that you can use anywhere. So it's. Oh, okay. Like it's a floating sixteen with. Yeah. 32. So it kind of. It paradoxically makes it harder. Single banks are easier until going from like 16 kilobytes to 144 is much easier than going from 48 kilobytes to 49. Because it, it's <laughs> it's like having one uh, giant airplane hangar versus a mansion with a bunch of smaller rooms. You, <laughs> oh, I see. I see. It just opens it up. You know, yeah. but yeah, and again, you, you might have less space, but sometimes you have more space within that. You know, so, you know, if you, if you built a yacht in this room, then you have to fit it in, you know, a living room. That's like, right. Like, you have to, uh, I, that's actually an amazing analogy. It's like, okay, you can build it in the mansion, but you have to make it fit through the doorways. Exactly. You know, and, and if you yes. start knowing that, it's much easier to handle it. And yeah, ultimately, yeah. You, but if you if kind of build in, assuming that you have all the space, it's going to be much harder to, to adjust. So, um, but yeah, and then, and, you know, and... You know, tech-wise, it just it it simplifies a lot of things if you're just going to use one bank. But you know, yeah, it's um, that's it, that's kind of the next thing because yeah, with with uh, this game, Dragon's Cash, I was messing with like the double buffer, two-player input, you know, and mm. um, things like that. And then so yeah, I, I one of the kind of future games on the docket, I'm looking at like okay, what can I do with multiple banks? Um, mm. You know, and, and you know, given that you know, there's, that's a lot of ROM space. But then, yeah, if you and I'm smart with it, you can fit a lot of content in. Yeah, nice. Well, thank you so much for for coming on the stream, and uh, congratulations on Dragon's Cash coming out. Is this your first release through Atari Age? Yeah, um, it, it's because I'm thinking you've done a lot of games, but I'm like. I think this is your first release. First 7800 release. I mean, uh, 2600 with uh, was uh, Dragon's Descent, and weirdly enough, like Dragon's Descent got to the oh. point where it's like, oh, that's right, 99 percent done. Downstairs. Yeah, it's yeah. you know, like yeah, yeah, this release is a little weird because this is kind of my second major 7800 game, but it's the first released. Um, just how right. it panned out, but yeah, the other uh, Dragon's Descent is imminent. But yeah, and I hope. I mean, I try to make a two-player game. People can sit side by side, and then the pandemic happens. So I'm I'm hoping folks get a lot of. Have a lot of fun playing head to head with a, with a friend or enemy of theirs. Um, yeah. like it. Yes. If if not uh, if friends at the beginning, maybe enemies at the end. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Oh, thanks uh, for coming on. It was a pleasure talking to you. I remember we we met at PRG 2019. Yeah, 2019. Well. Oh my goodness, that. Long ago. Really I know it seems so long ago now that it even existed. So hopefully 2022, everything is 100% go, which I'm sure it'll be. And maybe we'll see each other again there. Definitely. Well, and major thanks. I mean, thanks to Ben, who was a major help getting the, getting the uh, 
the print material done. It looks amazing. And and to Al, of course, yeah. this is you've been incredibly supportive and, and an amazing, amazing guy to work with. So thank you oh, all. Yeah. Really yeah, good to see wonderful. you. Wonderful. Yep, good to see you too. Uh, thanks so much, and talk with you soon. Take care. Bye, Todd. I could play this forever. It's just so <laughs> relaxing. Is it? It's yeah. Just, Jewel matching games are great. Oh, kitten, you really can't be on here. Oh, I know. I'm sorry. So sweet. I'm so sorry. Okay. Okay, so it is uh, giveaway time, but we're going to do that with Muddy Funster on the line. Okay. Uh, if he has any ideas? Any ideas? Or do you want me to pull another cart? I That'd be really cool. I'd really like that. The At carts? least two more. Just two get, more? Or get okay. three. Pull three. Okay. And we'll choose between I'll them. Get you, um... Um, so, if you could bring up his game. Which is, uh, oh my why did I staple these upside down and backwards? That's a very, Daredevil. very good question. <laughs> and uh, this is nominated for a best packaging. And we'll get him on the line. I can see him wanting to get in here right now. Actually, I can just bring him on this one. Excellent. I think. Let's see if that works. Oh, yes, it does. That's excellent. Okay. I have a little bit back. Okay. Okay, so, uh, on the line soon with us, uh, Lewis Hill, uh, Muddy Funster, known as on the Atari Age forums, uh, whose game, a Daredevil. Welcome. I will switch you over so I can hear you. Welcome, Lewis, to the show. Welcome to Atari Age Day. Hey, James. Oh God, hey, you've Tanya. Got a, <laughs> you've got a lot of games behind you. That's a, quite a stack. That's awesome. And tire tracks prominently displayed. Your last game. And uh, this is your second release through Atari Age, correct? Yes, that's right. That's, uh, that's number two. Yeah. Excellent. And it continues on in the line of very, very colorful... Act, uh, can you say Activision inspired? <laughs> Absolutely, um, yeah. Judging by the Muddy Vision kind <clears> of <throat> uh, name, yeah, and uh, yeah, they're they're really really great um, games in even in the gameplay style of of Activision games where they're very contained, very fun. Uh, it's, it's very obvious what your goal is. Um, Absolutely. I think um, when I was growing up with 2600, Activision was really, in my mind, the gold standard. And I wanted oh, to, yeah. you know, maybe I'm copying those guys, aping them a little bit, but that was uh, that was the look and feel I was always shooting for when, when I put tire tracks together. And I thought, what what better, um, you know, homage or um, yeah. way to, to celebrate that? Oh, yeah. And if you're going to copy or, or do a tribute to anyone, I mean, act, you couldn't go wrong with Activision. They were definitely the kings of the 2600 back in the day. Here's the cover of the uh, cartridge um, showing actual gameplay, which is also a, a thing Activision would do. They were very proud of how good their games looked yeah. and, and as they should be and as you should be as well. The, the game is so incredibly colorful um, and, and great use of all of what the 2600 can do with triplicating and doubling uh, the, the sprites. There's the, uh, the manual. Very nice. And you've got the rainbow trailing behind him, just like you did in tire tracks. This is gorgeous. Who did the uh, the artwork for all of this? That was Atari Boy. He has to take uh, all of the credit for that. He's done an absolutely fantastic job. Um, oh, yeah. The, the work he did on tire tracks was just fantastic. And for me, asking him to help with Daredevil was a no-brainer. It was just a, such oh, yeah. an obvious choice. Oh, definitely. And and making them match together and and having like making them into a set yeah. is uh, is very very smart. Um, and the back, you've got a, a very great uh, dejected-looking <laughs> parachuter uh, with a duck looking onward on him, a mallard, going, hey, buddy, it's okay. <laughs> You'll fly again. <laughs> oh, it's just gorgeous. Um, and the inside, too, full of uh, 
cartoony uh, drawings with the balloons there showing the different levels and the blimp. Have you played this game before? Yes, I okay. believe so. Yeah, yeah. Okay, pop it in. Okay. Um, yeah, beautiful, yeah. beautiful. Uh, everything uh, about manual. that, we wanted to go for the, the classic style, the Activision style, the box, the label, the, the manual. Yeah. Well, definitely achieved that. Uh, so we we'll pop the game in and we'll get that going. Oh, and uh, how can I forget the music? Yeah, Rush, oh Rush Jet did a, a, another amazing job. I, I tried to do some tunes for the game. Um, I was reliably told that my sound effects sounded like someone doing something with a dentist drill or something with a hot <laughs> poker to a cat. So I decided to, <laughs> I took a step did back and decided useful? to let the experts do that. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, those those descriptions could be useful in some games, mm -hmm. but if you're trying to depict those actual things, like a, a, a dentist uh, simulator game for the 2600, you know, it wasn't there have been it two wasn't the the effect I was going for with uh, Daredevil though. So it was uh, I, I let someone with some more musical taste do that. Yeah, and dare I say the music, the title music in this game is is one of the best songs I have ever heard on the 2600 composed. Uh, it's just when I first heard it, I was just blown away by the talent behind it. To think uh, that's being done just with Tia is is amazing. It captures the yeah. the um, almost like the theme and the vibe of the the floating through the sky and it does. It's got the reverby effect of trailing off notes. It sounds like so many voices mm. being done done at once um, with with just the limited two voice two voices of the Tia. Um, but it sounds yeah. like five or six. Yeah, yeah. As a developer who's quite sonically challenged is the polite way I would describe <laughs> it, um, getting to work with um, artists like Rush Jet and, and uh, Synth Papa yeah. Loser on the 7800, um, for me, that's a real privilege because those guys, they're really the top of their game and they, they produce some absolutely oh, yeah. fantastic work. Yeah, whenever they post something uh, in the forums, I, I rush to play it. Um, because I know it's going to be just astounding quality. And I'm like, and they just seem to just crank it out. Like it's nothing. Yeah. Like they just, Oh, here's a tune I made the other day. And I'm like, uh, what, <laughs> what game is this going to be in <laughs> a no game? This has to be in a game, put it in a game. Oh my God. Yeah. And their work on like 7,800 as well. Cause the T is on both. Mm. You would, you would think that they're, they're using uh, a pokey chip yeah. uh, for some of their 7,800 work. It's unbelievable. Um, so this, this must seem like a long time ago to you, uh, Ooh, Daredevil, because yeah. it, it seems like a long time ago it, for it, me. It, it seems like a lifetime ago because <laughs> I think, um, I, I, I've moved on a little bit from 2600 into 7800 work. Exactly. And, I, and I think I started Daredevil, I think it was December, 2018. And that's when I posted wow. the first kind of, I've had this idea binary and and that's probably near when we played it the very in probably in 2018 when we started this show yeah. <laughs> now we're you know three on our fourth year of broadcasting the show and it's like oh, oh my goodness it seems so long ago and y you've gone your work on the 7800 is is incredible it's it's astounding and and I mean, you can see the inklings of it here with being able to push the colors and gameplay on your tire tracks and Daredevil. Um, so have you uh, completely fallen in love with the 7800 now? And and you're, there's no turning back. <laughs> I, I would never say never. Um, the the yeah. 2600 is, is absolutely my... I have a soft spot there. It was my first console yeah. when I was a, a young kid. And you see the work of folks like you know David Crane, Carol Shaw... Those are the rock stars. Yeah. So yeah. will I go back to the 2600 at some point? Absolutely, yeah. I, I've got some unfinished business there. I've got a few projects which um, I would like to, to bring through. Um, but for the moment, I'm, I'm having so much fun with the 7800. Oh. Um, yeah, you are. You've and got that's... so many, how many games in the pipeline, like 10, 10 ideas yeah. total. And... But there's, there's EXO, is, um, I'm, we're shooting for a summer completion on that. Whether we'll release in the summer, I don't know. But... That that's that's close. That's real close. Then there's Bernie. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Right behind you. I can see him on yeah. the shelf. There he is. Yeah. There's yeah. Bernie. Um, yeah. 
and I've got a Skunk Works project going on as well. There's a few other little bits and pieces. Um, but yeah, there's a the, and, and Danger Zone as well. Danger Zone came out as well. So yes, oh, yeah. oh that's true. Yeah, yes, that, yeah, that one's finished. Pretty, yeah, yeah, it's pretty much finished. Yeah, I need to chat with Al about when we're going to get that one. Um, yeah, I think we get one into the store and things. So yeah, it's um, mm. yeah, I really, really and, uh, into, into the seventy eight hundred in a big way. Oh yeah, yeah, that's an understatement. Let's say <laughs> uh, <laughs> probably the most prolific seventy eight hundred programmer right now. That's for sure. And simultaneous things going on. I think Vlad would give me a run for my money on that. Uh, you're very right. <laughs> <laughs> Let me take that back. One of the most prolific. Um, uh, Arena Foot asks a very good question since these are very Activision y. Did you ever envision a patch for either one of these? We, um, we did, yes. Um, and we've, I've even got designs for the patches. The problem we had was the company that we, I had got to do the patches in the UK. Um, yeah. when the pandemic hit, they went out of business. Um, oh, so no. getting them made at a reasonable cost then became a, a bit of a, a challenge. So it's something right. we are still looking to do, um, absolutely, because um, I think it would just complete them in terms of the, the what we're aiming yes. for. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're so Activision-y, it's almost expected yeah. that there's like it, it, a patch. It could just feel wrong table. not to, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, and there's a lot of, um, th there's more and more patches being associated with homebrew games. And I think it's such a fun, a fun thing to do to not only promote the game, but to give people a challenge and to get them really experiencing getting far in the game. Yeah. Because I know when I do challenges on the show, or I try and finish a game, or I try and push it as far, or trying to compete against other people. I know that I go much further in the game than I ever would normally playing it. But I think patches are a great, uh, great incentive. It, it's That's the sure. electronic equivalent of the carrot and the stick, I think. <laughs> it is. It's like, yes, the game is fun. Definitely. Like all these, these games. But pushing you further is like, okay, this is going to be a little bit of punishment. But by the end, you're going to like appreciate the game a lot more. Especially like, like you look at this level where there's like snow uh, or rain and maybe, you know, a, a player would not normally get to a higher level, but then you're in competition. You're like, oh, I didn't even know that the programmer put in this kind of stuff mm. further on. It's, it's like how many people reach the end of a game, like, like for games that have ends yeah. and those programmers that go, oh, you can even see it online now with statistics with uh, digital games. They give stats of how many people actually finished the game, and the developers go and look at like, oh, three percent of the people. It, yeah, it's very the game. few. Yeah. So only three percent of people saw what I programmed. You know, so many, so many hours finishing the game. So I think patches really help service that kind of thing for Atari games. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just rambling. <laughs> um, I've run out of questions. Um, so any anything you'd like to talk about about the development of uh, this game or, or even tire tracks and, and developing 2600 games versus... How about that? 2600 versus 7800. Uh, pros and cons for both. Yeah, that, that's, that's a really good question. I think um, both systems are unique in terms of... Um, People think, oh, you move to the 7800, you've suddenly got um, all these extra resources. And while that's true to a point, you still, Gone soft. Yeah, <laughs> you still have to work within the constraints of the system. So it's, you know, um, you can't always do all the things you want to do. You have to trade what you want to feature versus how many resources you have to implement the things you want to implement. Um, and the 2600 yes. is no different. And, you know, when, when I sit in the company of you know folks like todd and and john and, and all these other great programmers i i be honest with you i feel quite um quite the uh, the, the, the new kid the amateur uh, i've been doing this for a couple of years and it's these guys are really yeah. really uh, you know they're really good but um it's it, it, they're, they're two very unique systems uh, if i if i'm honest i prefer the 7k because I, I have a wider canvas i can do more of the things i want to do um, and the creative yeah. duties can run away 
Whereas the, the 2600, I think you have to be more of a laser focus and um, bring what you want in and you, you can't, there's not too much room for extra stuff really. Yeah. With, with, with Daredevil, that was um, the idea I got from that uh, was um, I I'd, I'd pretty much finished up on tire tracks and um, I started playing through some old games on, on the Harmony cart and I picked up Parachute. Um, mm. yeah. And I, I, I played it a little bit and I thought, wow, this is almost a good game. Um, it, it's yeah. such a shame. This is um, there's some really odd design choices here, and I think it was actually Thomas uh, Jensen had actually done the PAL conversion, a P60 header for it, so I could actually play it. But it wouldn't yeah. go away. I, I, I every uh, couple, of, it kept coming back, and, and I thought, well, I bet I could do something like this in, in Batari Basic, and then. One thing led to another, and then it was a little sample of some sprites movie, and then the little guy moving on the parachute, and then before I know it, you you then have a rush, and it's like right. a week later we've got a framework. Yeah, and it's a game that's very suited for the twenty six hundred. Yeah. Everything's on horizontal lines, so there's no you know multiplexing needed to happen. There's there's no cramming of code yeah. on, on uh, for the for the kernel that needs to happen. So it's very well suited for the 2600. It is. And uh, yeah, Esther says he, lo he loves your guy's animation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot <laughs> yeah. of really nice artwork and color Thank going you. on in this game. Appreciate and, that. You know, the end, the end screens when you die, there's a lot of flourishes mm -hmm. to it. And a, gr a great cloud, too. I'm just wondering if, ta if Tanya's gone in the water yet because we put an extra death screen in there. With the shark. Oh, did you go in the water? No. You should go in the water if this one's on I don't know if I made level. it to that. <laughs> yeah, nice little bon death bonuses. They're not all just the same. They're right? not all the same. Oh, there's no water in this one. Ah! <laughs> yeah, I always die right at the end. Too. Um, so it, it is time to, to give away another gift certificate. I, I don't want to put you on the spot. Uh, if you don't have one, we have other means of giving it away. But if you have a trivia question or... Mm some sort of thing even related to your games or uh, anything about the atari um, or it doesn't even have to be about the atari which is something that's not super easy but not super hard mm. i could give you a super well, hard a... one um but not you everyone couldn't. would be um um probably getting there so let, let me let me think okay yeah. um how many and um, can i can i give like a, a range as the answer uh, sure. I mean, as long as you can definitively say somebody got the answer uh, okay. when they when they type it in. So it, it might be fine. fastest finger first then. So um, how many distinct levels are there in Daredevil? Ooh, that's a good question. And specific to your game. Yeah. So the, the level counter will roll over when oh. you pass the last level. What is the highest level number? Oh, well, we've got 8, 15, 99, 10, 5, 6, 8. <laughs> Any of those? Pen gone. Did you steal my pen? No. Uh, oh, we've got lots of lots of answers. Are you able to see them, or do you want me to read them out? Yeah, they're, they're on my other monitor to, just to the right, so I'm just going to take a take a look. Oh, sure. See if anyone has got a right. Oh, yeah, there's a few right answers. Okay, good. So it's ever whoever's the first in, right the, in the chat, yeah. So oh, I, I, I think that would be Snow Two because the I think the number is actually eight. Oh, oh well, the first actual answer that somebody typed in was right. Yep. Ooh. Excellent. Well, it's a very educated guess. Eight is a very uh, computerish number. Um, <laughs> so we will give it to Snow Two. Congratulations, Snow Two or Snoo Two. Um, Daredevil levels. Just make a little note. So good, uh, good question and good guess. Good answer, or yeah. maybe maybe they know the answer. Maybe they know. I have not made Excellent. it to level eight. <laughs> Tanya's hasn't made it to level eight, so her game playing has not given it away. Nope, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Cap. Nope. So thank you so much for joining us. Absolute pleasure, James. Today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and it's been just an immense joy to play all of your games, 2600 and 7800. I always eagerly await the next time I can play one on the show. And I'm looking forward to all your new ones because you've got a ton. And you made me uh, buy an adapter 
for my 7800 so I can use the mouse. <laughs> so you've spent some money for me uh, because of that, uh, that demo you put out. But it's, uh, it's always good to be prepared for yeah. any eventual game that could possibly I've, I've got plans out. for that one. That one's a bit further down the line, but we've got plans for that one. Oh, good. So I didn't waste my money. Then. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So I'm looking forward to playing uh, the possibly first mouse game on the 7800. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe you can. It, maybe you can inspire others to make uh, point-and-click games like Sim City and and things like that. Because if uh, if uh, your game gets people buying mice for the 7800, then maybe people want to program more for it. So uh, thanks for coming on. Uh, it's been wonderful, and uh, we will talk with you soon. Right. So thanks, James. Thanks, Tanya. Take care. Thanks, everyone. Bye bye. Yeah, he's being very yeah, he is uh, being bad. annoying because this is where my mousing is happening. <laughs> so he's so cute. He is very very cute. Yes. Are you okay? Do you need a break? Me? Yes, to get up or stretch your legs or oh no. anything like that. You're doing okay. Because We're doing pretty good. It is technically happy hour, so I may fill my Atari Age glass up with some beer. Oh, boy. Um, do you want something to drink or can I get you something? some water, please? Some water? I, this tea is very, very cold. It is very cold. And, uh, so we coming up, we will be talking with a uh, blue swimmer about cannon head clash. Excellent. Uh, and thank you for following uh, bender unit. Good name. Mm -hmm. Uh, we'll be talking with, uh, sorry, blue swimmer about cannon head clash. Then Rick Pryor, uh, carry Jimbo about uh, Ms. Galactopus, and then Carlos Ciento, Cento, oh boy, uh, Raymond C, about the end. But it is not the end. There are many, many more to go. <laughs> Lots more to go. It is not the so, end. So, <laughs> uh, Cannon Head Clash. Oh, you've got it out. That's yeah. excellent. So if you could take the tea away, I that will. would be actually and really good. Yes, I will. it'll free up a lot water. of space. And I will unpack cannon head clash Lovely. well i get blue swimmer on the line uh hopefully um he is still awake and with us hopefully this doesn't run so late that i am getting into people's bedtimes because i don't know where they all are right that guy the last uh the last person um lewis hill uh sounded like he was in the uk <laughs> And he was talking about getting things done in the UK. And I'm like, oh my God, what time is it in the UK? I am so sorry. I did not know. I should have asked him where he is uh, located. Um, so, Blue Swimmer is on Skype. And let's get that up. There he is. Boom. That ready. I'll wait for him to come on. Now he has just a pseudonym. Even on his game boxes, he is known as Blue Swimmer. He is mysterious and unknown. Uh, this was nominated for Best Homebrew, Best Graphics, Best Music and Sound, and Best Under 4K Game. So lots of accolades there um, for in the uh, last, this most recent year's uh, Atari Homebrew Awards. And it may be too late. Maybe it's like, oh, it's 4.15 I was supposed to be on and it's 5.36. No interview, I'm in bed. <laughs> it could be, and that's okay. I don't blame them. We will move on. So we may not have our next guest. We'll see. Check, check, check. How's everybody doing? It's 1.36 here. Okay. Mm, mm, mm. That was fairly late. I mean, it is the weekend. I did want to make it on the weekend so that... Uh, but I'm too hyped to sleep. Well, good. You can watch the uh, some more of the show. <laughs> is this new set permanent? No. Hell no. <laughs> We're in our living room. And we have disrupted everything for this. Um, and all the cables are out in the open, 
which means the cats have actually chewed on some of them, unfortunately. I am on Skype, on the call. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> you are? Oh. Oh, you are on the call. Well, I don't see you. Um, it, on the top there. Yeah. It's just there's no video. Yeah, so he needs to turn on his video. Oh, you are on the call. It's interesting. I don't hear you either. There's a video oh. button? No. Oh, well, we don't hear him because you're not switched over. Maybe he's being really mysterious and we won't even see him. There, we can hear him. Oh, um, am, 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 am I live? You are live. Oh, shoot, we um, are. Okay. Uh. Yes. <laughs> so we, do, we are connected, which is good. It's good. Uh, we don't have a video. Is that intentional? Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. I would rather not show my face. You are mysterious. Oh, <laughs> the mystery continues. And that is perfectly fine. Um, but we can hear you, which is awesome. So welcome to Atari Age Day, Blue Swimmer. Uh, hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got your new game here, Cannon Head Clash. Uh, beautiful wraparound box. Tell us who uh, did this artwork for you. Uh, so this was done by VHZC on Atari Age. Uh, you probably know Ooh. him for his other uh, Atari home brews. I think, ha have you played one of his on on, on here already? Uh uh, no, he is scheduled last, and uh, we're just reading something out from him. Um, uh, English is not his first language, so he uh, wanted to do a written thing, so we'll be doing a written thing for him. Um, but we're very excited about his, his new game. As so well. he did he the box art. often. He did the cartridge label, but did the instruction yeah. manual. Well, I wrote it, but he did, like, the art in the, in the manual and, like, actually, like, Organized it so that it looks nice. So I think it yeah, looks fantastic. It does look very, very nice. Uh, especially with the wraparound, it goes all the way around to the back. It is just absolutely gorgeous. Especially love that part on the back with <laughs> them playing the. Oh, yeah. The oh, party. that's so cute. Let me show that. Look oh, at that's, that. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. What a great little uh, mascot character. He looks like he could be turned into a plushie. In about two seconds. Yeah, pretty much. Ah, jeez. <laughs> Merchandise is probably the last thing I'm thinking about right now, so. <laughs> yeah, no pressure. Time to do merchandising. And uh, there is, oh, look, the cartridge is different than the front of the box. There you a go. A first, first yeah. one. Yeah. It's a little bit different. It has just, yeah, he's on a just different the main land. character, yeah. He's on the grass. Um, he has no opponent. And he's got, yeah, it's great. Wow. Congratulations on the first person to have a different cartridge label <laughs> than, than on the front of the uh, cover. That's awesome. an interesting distinction for sure. It is. <laughs> and there is the front of the manual, same as the front of the box, and a beautiful, I mean, VHZC's artwork is so gorgeous. And uh, there's an explosion on the back of it. Looks wonderful. Um, you want to plug that yes, in? Yes, I will. And we'll get to playing. And we have played this on the show. It is a absolutely fun two-player game. And also has uh, computer AI as well. Um, so let's get that up. So it has uh, destructive uh, elements in the game where you are able to destroy the land you are on, which is a lot of fun actually because it slowly eats away at the the uh where you're standing which makes it harder and harder um so i i i, I find i've said this before and i find there's never enough simultaneous two-player uh games out there um did he, did canada head clash start out as a two-player game or was it an afterthought and primarily conceived that there would just be a computer imposed? Or did the AI come after? So, it actually has kind of weird development history because there was that whole like general idea of like, pull down the button to shoot further kind of thing. But initially it was considered as a one-player game, but... It it was like completely different. Like it was gonna be like a giant swarm of like enemies and stuff just coming at you, and you'd have to oh. shoot them down and whatnot. 
Yeah. At one point, I was considering sort of like more like a punch out sort of scenario where you just fight like a ever increasing difficulty of opponents and stuff like that. Oh. Okay, rather than a round based. And system. then eventually, yeah. I just it, I just decided just to dial it back to just the two player versus. Yep. And I think it works really, really well as that. And um, this, I can't remember if there's different difficulty uh, settings for the AI uh, opponent. There isn't, no, unfortunately. <laughs> it's okay. just... He, he is very challenging, though. He like, he, he's, he's a fine balance between easy and difficult. Like, if you start... If, if you learn his, his movements and you learn to do the timing... Uh, then it gets a lot easier, but that's the same as if you were uh, playing against a uh, a human opponent as well. So if if you could maybe talk about the uh, how you develop the AI and when he moves, when he shoots, and how accurate his shots are. So the AI, uh, I'm gonna need to try to find the code for this. I. <laughs> Because I know the movement, but to give like a basic overview, the movement is very random. Like, I think every time it turns around, it gives like, <clears throat> it either moves forward somewhere between like 16 and 47 frames. And then after that timer turns off, then it just turns around another random number of frames. And of right. course, usually it turns around when there's a when it hits like a like an area where that I can't walk off. Right. But he does sometimes walk off. Yeah, that was mostly <laughs> a fixed issue where sometimes it would just walk back and forth on the edge of a platform. I just decided like, well, if it does that, I might as well just have it walk off. So. <laughs> And, and it kind of works because, you know, you have that element of, okay, a human opponent could do that. They do that. Yeah. So it, it adds a bit of, uh, a little bit of realism to it almost. Yeah, I do I mean, feel like it does do it a little too much for my liking, but... <laughs> That's okay. He's, he's hard enough that it's, it's not too bad that he does it. <laughs> um, yeah, and Mike Soul says, I like how unique the gameplay is in this game. It is... It is fairly unique. You don't see a lot of games like this where there's destructive platforms and it's one against one. It, it harkens back to um, Worms or those tank games where you take turns. But this is a real-time version of those. What was your inspiration for making this? So I have heard the Worms comparison a lot. Just basically, I think I've discussed this before on one of your streams, but... There was, like, this Minecraft mini-game. And, like, mm. the idea was that you threw, like, TNT at the other team on an island. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, the funny thing is, I actually don't like that game very much. <laughs> <laughs> like, just to describe some of the issues that I had with it. So, it was a team... It was, like, 16 players. Eight people were on each team. So, right. whichever team had the first player die... You knew they were going to lose because they had less firepower. Oh, but okay. Since yeah. you had way more freedom of movement, it take took way longer for the, for the game to end. Mm. So basically, it was just like five people on one team just trying to chase down this one guy. Oh, yeah. At at one point, it just gets imbalanced. So yeah. I really didn't think about the gameplay balance at that point. So I think. <laughs> The limitations of the 2600 actually kind of work to the game's benefit in this case. Yeah, it's not too overblown. This The screen size limitations means the islands aren't too big. Yeah. So you don't have... You can't hide so or you make can't them shoot move around. Really far. Like, there's a lot more limited movement. Yeah. Oh, Tanya's getting the hang of it now. Well, it's fun. It's, it's <laughs> almost better to play one level because you kind of figure out... What oh, your strategy I is, see. whereas when it keeps changing levels, you're you're readjusting. But so you can get you can get better at one level and, yeah. and like perfect that level because some levels are like they have a barrier in between. You have to knock down the barrier first, or you can let the other guy do it. Ah. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Um, 
Yeah, people are saying this is a good party game. Not a lot oh, of two-player simultaneous games. Uh, Muddy Funster says, I can imagine this being very competitive after a few bottles of beer. Well, Tanya's on her way. Mm -hmm. uh, she started on the beer. <laughs> um, uh, oh, my goodness. I've run out of my questions already. <laughs> no more questions. Um, yeah. Oh, jeez. Uh, yeah. Well, I got a couple of things to talk about then. Uh... Yeah, so um, this was nominated for uh, four awards. It was quite highly celebrated uh, when it came out, that's for sure. Um, when, uh, do you have more games in the pipeline? Actually, that's a good question. To be perfectly blunt, I have no idea what I'm going to be doing after this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you enjoy programming for the 2600? <laughs> like, I do. I really do. But, like... Yeah. I feel like I'm going to have a really hard time topping this. Oh, that kind of thing. Yeah, that is a danger when you make uh, such a good game. And then people, people expect you to be like, Oh, you have to make a better one now. Like, And you go, Oh, now there's this pressure of making a better one. Yeah, so I can I can understand it, the the hesitancy to to possibly disappointing people or yourself. Oh yeah. Yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah. Sophomore slump, as somebody described it. Yeah. Oh, here's a good question. Vitoko says, "How many different play fields does this game have?" Uh, check. There are ten preset ones. Yeah. And there's also a random mode, so like it has like randomly generated terrain. Oh, that's great. And um, with the randomly generated terrain, I, I believe I remember this. You, it's generated so you ha you're able to traverse the whole island, correct? Uh, when it's generated, there's no two steps where you're stuck. Uh, not quite. It it can this generate two right. steps occasionally, but it's yeah. extremely rare. Like basically, oh, okay. it uses a modified version of what's called like midpoint displacement. Oh yes. I remember this discussion now. And basically, so first it generates one end, and then it generates how high the other end is. And so yeah. it averages those two and adds like a random number to it. Yep. Yeah. And it does that for pretty much, and it does that again for, it's like kind of sort of recursive. Except, yeah. not really, because this is a 2600 and I'd probably get a lot of errors if I did that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so this generates uh, good enough islands. And, yeah. And it's, so, it's, so it's not too stuck. So like the, you notice that sometimes might... it's got like ledges where it kind of goes down and then goes right back up. Oh, like okay, that's yeah. just one of the quirks of it, because that tends to happen a lot. <laughs> Well, it, the good thing about it is when you do the randomly generated uh, screens, it looks like you mirror it for the other person. So if you are at a disadvantage, they're at a disadvantage too. Yeah. So it's all even. Yeah. Um, so, uh, excellent. <laughs> I will say, uh, programming th this was quite the challenge because I had to squeeze it all into one <laughs> basically less than a oh. frame. Oh, yeah. Uh, how big is this game, actually? I believe it's seven bytes shy of four kilobytes. Yeah, so it's really quite good for a 4K game. I, I can understand why it was nominated because, you know, you've got a title screen and you've got all these game variations and a great looking game all packed into 4K. And it's it's really... Did you, did you choose 4K to be challenged or did you choose 4K because of the simplicity of the bank switching? I mean, all of my games are 4K or less. It's just, like, I don't know. Like, I've never really felt the need to go beyond 4K at this point. So right. it could be possible that a game that I make in the future is, like, 8K or even above that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, it wasn't really something I was super consciously thinking about during development. <laughs> right. You... you you just had your sights set on making a game and whatever fell out. From yeah. Place. Like, in fact, the very first version that was released of this, where, when it was just called Bomb Game, 
Oh, that nice. could have actually right. fit into two kilobytes. Oh, wow. But since he added all the maps and the other stuff, it's definitely a 4K right. game now. Oh, yeah, definitely. The 2K and 1K games have a very distinct look from 4K. You can really tell when it goes up. Some, some, some are pushing the limits of it. It's like, wow, that's a 4K game. But yes, um, you can sh usually see the separation between between them and it's usually in you know things like you said you mentioned like uh, maps or graphics or a screen or something like that um so any anything else you'd like to add about the game or the release or anybody think you anybody you'd like to thank and, and it's great that you got vhzc to do your artwork oh my god this is gorgeous uh well, I guess I did want to kind of mention, like, where they like, the, the origin of the characters, I guess. Because, like, so many yeah, people yeah. comment on, like, how expressive they are and whatnot, so... Figure oh, it's true. at least worth mentioning. Yes. Like, so, so where, originally... Where did the design come from? The design was, like, going to be for a different game. Hmm. And then I realized, oh, these would actually kind of fit well in this game. So they oh, yeah, yeah. they just kind of showed up here. <clears throat> so yeah, the primary cute. design shoot inspiration shoot. was like the yeah. Met from Mega Man. Oh, okay. So I do so <laughs> I think mentioning that now the resemblance is a bit noticeable. <laughs> yeah. Like they've got the feet and the very circular looking bodies. Oh yeah, they're great, and and when they when they scrunch down and 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 get ready to shoot their bombs, it's just adorable. Yeah, you got to make plushies for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like the squish down and then squish back up. Like I'm not sure how many people notice it, but there's like three oh, frames once you release the button, where Ooh, there's like a, where you see them like extend up. And usually you can't see it very well unless someone falls into the water when that frame happens to be on screen. That's like a big part of what makes the animation so snappy yeah. looking. And, and is it literally one frame? Is that why you, you can't see it? Because it it's looks three like frames. it's so quick. So it's only on screen for like a 20th of a second. Oh, okay, yeah. Just enough to give it that kind of momentum like, of oomph. shooting. Yeah. 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 And it, 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 yeah. It's always those little things that the person playing it may not see but they know is they would know if it was missing it would just not feel quite the same yeah brilliant things like that yeah so excellent well thank you so much uh for joining us on the stream it was it was uh uh wonderful for you to be here and i know how uh secretive you are <laughs> it's been a pleasure <laughs> yeah and um yeah uh everybody can get out and uh buy canon head clash now so awesome Why, it was fun game. yeah oh i love this game it's so much fun and i was getting so frustrated playing with you because you were kicking my butt <laughs> when you were playing it. and and it's it's one that just 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 brings out the competition when you're playing oh, it when yes. you're playing against someone so yeah. I, I great two-player game it's right? a wonderful two-player game so yeah, yeah. okay yeah. well thank you so really much good. blue swimmer for joining us Thank you, thank you. Yeah, and we'll, uh, we'll see you online. See ya. Okay, bye bye. 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 Excellent. Like, it's it's actually a lot of fun. Um, oh, it's so much fun. And, and speaking to these developers too, like, the like at the award show, Atari Homebrew Awards, mm. you speak to a certain number of of developers but you don't get to speak to like all of the developers yeah. that put out the games yeah, yeah. so you get to speak to some people who have um never talked before online or come on a show like on this on a show yeah yeah and so you get uh, quite a diverse uh number of people yeah, I yeah like it's it. really great um so we're going to uh carry you jimbo who is rick Pryor, uh with miss galactopus mm -hmm. next uh, so. Alice told me to stop giving away prizes because <laughs> we're <laughs> running the prizes so are late. Done. Yeah. Because <laughs> we, I said we'd go to six thirty, right? Yeah. We've done well, the no. five o'clock prize. I think there were five prizes. He said. 
So I think we've given all five away. Uh, there's, but there's one more okay. with bonus. I have to get clarification whether it's just the bonus prizes. Oh, I see. Or the uh, gift certificate and something. the bonus prizes. The, the mug. Bonus prizes. This, remember? Oh, yes, the last one. And, and the circular thing. So if yeah. Al can um, private message me. Yeah, about that. Whether it's... Because I, I can't remember whether it's the, the gift certificate and the prizes or just the prizes. But we, just, we, just, we have one more um, to give away. And we'll give away that a little bit later in the show. But right now, we're going to talk to uh, Rick Pryor. Uh, awesome. Let's see what I talk to him on. It is on Skype. Bonuses and gift certificate. Ooh. There we go. And yeah, Rick is on a line. So I don't have a box for this one. Yes, no, it doesn't. It's not sold with a box, so it's yeah. it's fine. But there that's, is there is normal. a manual and a cart. So I have the manual and cart here. To oh, show good. Off. Yeah. Hello, Rick. Hi. You guys, hear me? Welcome. Yeah. Good. Yep, we can hear you. Hey. We can see you. Uh, epic door slash uh, cupboard behind oh, you. Oh yeah, it's Looks our awesome. giant armoire full of arts and craft supplies. Nice. Oh, it is. <laughs> it is super super awesome. I love it. It has that yeah. gothic -y feel with the the iron uh, hinges on the side. Yeah, like it looks that. like something <laughs> when you open it, it would creak. Yes. <laughs> very loudly and make a huge noise. Mm -hmm. it looks awesome. It's a little creaky, yeah. It's, a little... <laughs> it's been around a while. <laughs> yeah. So welcome to the show. Um, Thanks for having me. And congratulations on the release. Uh, the, let's say, unlimited release. Right, it's, it's a, I guess, a re-release. The, the re-release, yes, because this was originally uh, put out a couple of years ago. Yeah, uh, PRGE 2019. 2019. Yes, the last PRGE as a 20-run limited cartridge. Did I get the number right? There was uh, 20 of them? I made? sold 20. There are actually 25, but I, yeah. a few extras that I gave to friends and one I kept for myself. So there are 25 Excellent. total floating around out there. Excellent. I have one of those, by the way. <laughs> so I'm very uh, privileged to have one of the limited release. Is there a difference between the limited release and this one in uh, terms of look? That new release has the bug fixes that you guys all found during the high score competition last oh, year. Right. We did find one. I can't remember which one we found. Some it was a, sticking uh, baby. The baby goes off the screen. No, or, well, there were two just... bugs. There was that bug, and then there was the bonus score bug where it would just give you tons and tons of bonus points if you hit a very specific <laughs> circumstance <laughs> and, and for a high score competition that's either very good for the person playing it or bad for the competition yeah. you can yeah. yeah you can figure it out and you can milk that then <laughs> yes go I mean, for you it. won at that yeah, point you yeah you kind of won <laughs> yeah. and i love the manual i really oh, i always you. love this manual how to win at miss galactopus because this, it looks like it's not a manual. It look like, looks like one of those um, uh, things you get that are released after the game. It's like, oh, this game's kind of hard. It's here's, the unofficial manual. Yeah. It's, yeah, that here's, some, some random player releases, right? Yeah, yeah. here's how to step <laughs> through the game yep. and, and get the high scores. I think that was a really clever twist. So who put together the, uh, the manual? Uh, that was me. That was all. Oh, me. excellent. <laughs> oh, is this ISBN number accurate? Is uh, that a real one? No, that is. Uh, I'd have to look at it again. Remember, it's 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 a. It's kind of an inside reference to the '91 World Series. Okay. Oh, nice. So if you type in this ISBN, <laughs> it'll actually go to something, Ben. Not a book. Um, not that. Oh, no. okay. It's, no, I just okay. it's it's like a joke reference to. I like I can't remember exactly how I did it. I'd have to look at it again. But yeah, the numbers are a reference to the last game of the 1991 World Series. Oh, oh nice. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, 1991. There we go. <laughs> and it's got a price a price on it, too. If you ever feel that you want to buy the manual separately <laughs> <laughs> for Miss Galactopus, he's got it prepared if you somehow just have the cartridge. <laughs> um so what precipitated uh, getting this to be an unlimited release? Was it the positive feedback you got uh, from Miss Galacticus? Because it is an amazingly good shooter. Oh, thanks. Uh, it was just, you know, I sold it at PRGE, and Albert made those for me. And we were talking, and he, 
you know, brought up putting it in the AA store. So, yeah. yeah. And, and it Why wouldn't you want your game in the AA store? Yeah, yeah every, everybody <laughs> would for sure. And and I was like thinking when I got it, it's like, how can this not be uh, an unlimited release? It's such a great shooter. Did you, did you, you, yeah. you played oh, yes. it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think we you're the one who the found the bug. Score. Right? I might have, yeah. Of the, the, ba- the baby <laughs> like going off the yeah, screen. Yeah, she found one of the bugs when you were doing the, the competition show. The competition I score. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, it's a super, super fun uh, fun game. Um, so this is the third Should in I the line in? of Galactopus games. Well, yeah. S- so, somewhat. Somewhat. There's the Galactopus. Christmas one is kind of a one and a half. You know? Yeah. It's a like Star Wars Christmas special of Galactopus games. <laughs> <laughs> well yeah i don't know if you'd want to put it in that category that's that's uh yeah where you want to destroy every single copy that exists <laughs> but that's funny and but not not only that um shattered earth contains the galactopus as well uh, one of your yeah yeah kind your, of your newer game go ahead so shattered earth is kind of that's what happens after the galactopuses destroy the earth you know that's kind of oh. the idea that i was going for with that one is that it's it's not a straight up galactopus game but it's it's like the alternate reality where you fail to save the earth right yeah it i, I just as a side tangent yeah. um, you know it's one of those. Uh, shattered shattered earth is the aesthetic of it is unbelievably incredible i just it just i don't know about it it's black and white or or gray i can't remember if there's gray in it but it's black and white and it just evokes something like 1950s sci-fi <laughs> um in its sparseness and these cubes of destruction around you um i don't know just the something of the aesthetics just pleases me so much yeah the 50s um, sci-fi is definitely something if i do a cart release for shattered earth i oh. want to do the manual on the in the style of one of those old sci-fi paperbacks oh. Oh, that would be so amazing. Yeah, that would be unbelievable. Um, so is, the, is there more plans for Galactopus? Or are you like, I, I'm burnt out on Galactopus. Uh, is there a, a baby Galactopus? Like, I've been like playing the around series? with ideas for baby Galactopus. <laughs> I did predict it. Man. I swear I didn't read that anyway. No, I, I, no, I haven't posted anything like that really anywhere. But it's, I've been playing around with some ideas there. At this point, they're better in my head than they are in reality. <laughs> so, yeah, because I was goes. just thinking, oh, Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man, baby Pac-Man, baby Galactopus. And I mean, there are there is the baby Galactopus baby, yeah. in this game already. Yeah. Oh, that's that's hilarious. Um, so, uh, are shooters one of your favorite genres? Obviously, this is a, a shooter, and the Galactopus is a shooter. I mean, the shooters. There are shooters that I really, really like. Like there, are, you know, it's not my favorite genre, but there are like, you know, three or four of these shooter games that I really are in my like top ten. And then there are no other shooters in my like top one hundred, probably. It's just <laughs> oh, okay, specific shooters yeah, then. Yeah, it's just okay. I don't know. It was when I was first trying to play around with making an Atari game. It seemed like a, an easy place to start. Yeah, I mean, shooters make sense because, you know, you're at the bottom, you're fixed. Yeah. That's fairly simple. You're not moving around everywhere. There's things at the top you shoot. Uh, it's a it's a fairly uh, easy start into making games. And you see a lot of people messing around with Atari Basic. Shooters are usually the ones that yeah. they start with. It's a, it's a good starting off. It's definitely a good starting off point. And as I was building onto it and playing around with it, I just I realized, hey, this is a pretty good game. I'm going to share it with people and see what they think and just, yeah. you know, went from there. Oh, yeah. And the great thing about Miss Galactopus is it looks like it's a lot of the same, but it's actually not. There's a lot of variation in it. There's two different screens that you go back and forth to. And I think that's a big secret of success for a lot of games where there's at least some variation uh between the levels yeah um was was that something consciously you did so that it wasn't just shoot 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 the same thing yeah i wanted to mix things up i definitely wanted to try i like breaking things up with the bonus stage it seems like a natural way to break things up 
give people a little bit of a breather. Yeah, yeah just stir things up, mix things up a little bit. So it's not just the same, the same, the same, the same. Yeah. And uh, a really clever use of being able to put the score and your health is the bar at the bottom. Right. Where it doesn't decrease, it, it changes, changes colors. colors. And, and I don't, I'm sure I read it a long time ago. <laughs> it's, it is like the barrier to Earth. Yeah, it it's is... the protective barrier. After after we fought off the first Galactopus, we thought, <laughs> hey, we should do something in case these things come back. <laughs> now that we know Let's that there are Let's the people... planet with a giant force field. <laughs> That's right. The alien... Uh, octopuses are upon us. Uh, yeah, we're well, not alone, have... and they don't like us. Yeah, it's time to put up the barrier. It's it's definitely we need to defend the earth. Yeah, but obviously it fails because there is shattered earth. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, in that reality, it fails. In that reality, <laughs> yeah. we don't live in this world of <laughs> we don't live in the world of alien octopuses attacking Thank us goodness. with with bows in their hairs. Right. <laughs> Thank goodness. Thank goodness. Yes. Well, people are going nuts with uh, names of se <laughs> of sequels for you to make to the Galactopus. <laughs> We've got uh, uh, Galactopus Land, Super Galactopus, uh, pin Pinball Hybrid Baby Galactopus, Galactopus Forever, Galactopus and Pound Knuckles. Oh my goodness! Think, uh, so much. I fun. think Baby audio, Galactopus audio. will be the uh -oh. end. I think that's going to be really do think uh, that'll probably be where it ends with baby galactus yeah. in the in the trilogy yeah Let that'll, that'll give me a nice trilogy oh uh, we've plus got give me trilogy issues. plus christmas special so it'll it'll complete the star right. analogy <laughs> yeah they'll be happy with those three okay let me just uh switch away and try and fix the audio issues just one second if you bear with us i think if i switch him off and then switch it back. Maybe that'll fix it. Let's see. I'm gonna listen again. Check, check, check. One, two, one, two. Check, check, check. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. Oh, okay. Fix my audio. That's good. And then when we bring you back on, hopefully. All right. Uh, how are we sounding? Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. No. Nope. I think we nope. actually have to have to like disconnect you completely, um, which is unfortunately unfortunate. It fixes when you, when you go away off the screen, but then when you come back. Um, so what I'm going to do is disconnect from you, and then we'll reconnect back up. So just one, just hang in there. I'll call you back. Okay. So we've disconnected and we're calling him back. And let's check it out. Test, test, test. Hello, one, hello. Two, one, two. You're back. It always sounds good to us, but uh, we'll have to wait till the audio kicks in on the other side. Check, 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 check. One, two, one, two, one, two. Uh, let's wait for the delay so I can hear it on my end. Uh, check, oh my check. God, the delay is painful. Oh, it sounds good. Oh, I guess it's on. I have a worse delay than the people watching. <laughs> That's wonderful. Oh. Uh, great. Okay. We're in business again. All right. So now we know how to fix it even further. <laughs> That's excellent. Okay. Um, so... Uh, you're finishing up Shattered Earth. It, it seems like it's fairly complete yeah, now. Just trying to, you know, I've got some space left. Just trying to wedge a few more things in there. And Yeah. Um, any any games on the horizon besides Baby uh, Galactopus? I mean, <laughs> I've, got, I've got some other ideas for stuff. Nothing I've really worked a whole lot on. They're just, you know, ideas scribbling a notebook, basically, at this point. Yeah. I'd like to do, I mean, I, I want to do a driving game, like a like an old school top down racing game at some point. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, those are always fun. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, other stuff is yeah, just lots of vague ideas for things that may or may not be fun <laughs> games, you know. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, excellent. So, uh, congratulations. Thank you. On the release. Um, any anybody you'd like to anything else you'd like to say or anybody you'd like to to, to thank or uh, well, I'll, shout like, I'll or... thank Thor Thorvaldson who did the uh, label artwork. And, yep, which uh, is great. I love that artwork. Yeah, and then uh, the guys at Old School Gamer Magazine who let me sell the game at their booth. You know, gave me a corner, gave me a little corner of their booth to sell my game. <laughs> nice, nice. Everyone who who you know tried it out on Atari Age, who gave me feedback, found bugs, you know, told me what was fun, what wasn't, all that stuff. You know, that. Yep. Very very helpful. Yep. Excellent. And of course, thanks to Albert for, you know, for put for, you know, putting his life on hold and assembling hundreds and hundreds and thousands of games <laughs> to, to mail out to. He loves it. He loves to, doing that. To mail That's out to a life. bunch of nerds who, you know, <laughs> who got playing this forty-year-old console. console. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it's forty-fifth is coming up. Really? Yeah. Next year, right? Yeah, that's true. Seventy-seven. Uh, 2022 uh, yep 45th uh, anniversary september 11th 2022 wow. September 11th, really? yeah it's an unfortunate anniversary <laughs> date yeah it's one of those okay, it's one of those a... dates i didn't notice before and now like everything seems to have happened at september 11th at some point yeah. oh yeah yeah poor unfortunate souls who uh uh have their birthday on that, that one day of, too. one of my colleagues from work had his birthday on uh, september 11th and uh, i always thought oh god <laughs> especially on 2001 that would have been a bad birthday. oh yeah well yeah yeah wow um, so thanks so much uh, for being on the show. Thanks, for it. And uh, thank you so much for making Miss Galacticus. It's an awesome shooter, and shooters and platformers are my favorite genre, so I just love this game. Well, thanks for having me, guys, and thanks for thanks for doing this show. Thanks for putting this together. Oh, Fun. no problem. Yeah, you bet. So talk to you soon. Right. Bye, guys. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. Excellent. All right. Yeah, so many of these people I've never... Um, never talked to in person well not it's spoken not in not person sp no yeah. i mean I, i've spoken to a ton of them online forever yes you because, chat all the time yeah yeah because uh a lot of these people when their games are uh being developed i chat with them going okay what's new in this one we're going to do the show on this date mm -hmm. some q and a's we want to we want to show your game kind i want to show your game yeah. and they sometimes give me like pre-releases or uh, exclusive world debuts of games so i get a lot of background but a lot of them yeah. i've never talked to like like a majority of these people mm. I've, I've never had them on the show which is this is great to just do it all at once <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of work i had a long time um so we're going to be talking with uh carlos uh siento mm. siento 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 i don't know about uh his game the end oh yes okay. and uh That's next. that is next and uh, then it's Ryan Whitmer with Magical Fairy Force Ooh, on the 5200. That is exciting. So that, we're going to switch over to another system. That Which we hope exciting. will work. So. <laughs> it has been working. It's, it's <laughs> well warmed up. I think it's still on. Uh, I had to dust it off and bring it out. Yes. Where it's am quite I? quite dusty. Yeah. Oh, goodness. This. There we go. Okay, so Carlos, uh, who's known as Raymond C. Mm -hmm. um, another, oh my God, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous cover. Box. Really yeah. gorgeous. Um, so let's put that up so everybody can see that. And this time I will not uh, show off things on the computer. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Oh, let's get the light shining out of it. Beautiful, mm -hmm. beautiful, gorgeous artwork here. Great choice of colors. Got the green and the red and the yellow. And just the menacing, I don't know if you could see it at the top there. That menacing creature. In the background? In the background, like hiding, like almost -like. camouflaged. Yeah. Uh, it is bat-like, but it's like. It's like beetle-like too with a proboscis thing. Also beetle-like, but also like stingray. It. Yes, well. stingray. Yes, yes. So it's yes, like yes. A, a mix of many creatures. Yeah, I like that. A lot. Um, so let's uh, get Carlos on the line here, and he is through uh, Skype, which we're already on. Uh, there we go. He is on there. Boom. 
hopefully it's not too late where he is. I, I'm not, I don't know where these people are. I should have asked, asked them what time zones. Some of them were like obvious, like they have it in their profile. Mm. Carlos, hello. Oh, he was there for a second. <laughs> Let's bring you up full screen. Welcome to the show, Carlos. Can you hear us? Nope. He can't hear us. We can't hear him. We can see him. Okay. Uh, hopefully he can see us. Oh, there we there go. We go. Hello, welcome to the show. Welcome to uh, Atari Age Day. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Can you hear me? Yep, everything's good now. Excellent. So congratulations on uh, the release of your game, The End. Thank you. Um, it is a lot of fun, and it is a port from an arcade game. Yes. Uh, and is it... Um, Let's see. It uh, was nominated for three Atari Homebrew Awards, including Best Music and Sound, Best Graphics, and Best Homebrew. Um, well deserved. It is a lot of fun. Uh, and a shooter, another shooter, which I love shoot, shoot 'em ups. Um, and it's also from a 1980s Konami game, arcade game, which was unknown to me before seeing your port. And it might be unknown for a lot of other people too. And I believe this is the first ever port of this game to any system. Because I couldn't find any other record of this game being put on another system. Was, was this a game that you played in the arcade? Yes. Okay. Um, before I start, uh, please forgive my English. Uh, I live in Puerto Rico and our main language here is Spanish. So I'm just used to speaking English. Uh, so I hope that you can understand everything I say. Mm -hmm. You're doing okay, awesome. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes, the end uh, was a game that I played on the on my local arcade. Um, and I really liked the game. It, 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 because it was like a space shooter and it looked like uh, Space Invaders. Yes. Uh, for me, uh, it was one of those games uh, so difficult that I could not play it for a long time, but it was very fun. Uh, I recently uh, found that the game was also uh, made for uh, another console, uh, the Arcadia uh, 2001. Do you remember that console? Yes, uh, yes. I, I saw the video of that version uh, being played on YouTube, and it looks like the arcade, but the graphics appear to be poor in that system. But the game is good also. Right. Yeah, it. Uh, um, I didn't. I didn't find that it. Uh, I didn't uh, know that it was actually put out on another system. That's that's really, uh, really interesting. And you've done a great uh, conversion of it here. Um, so tell us a little bit about your programming background and what uh, drew you to the Atari Twenty Six Hundred and making games for the Atari 2600? Well, when I was uh, 40 years old, uh, my parents gave me an Atari 2600 for Christmas. And I played a lot with, um, with it, and it was, I was very impressed by the graphics and the sounds of the Atari. I wanted uh, to know how, this, how those cool games were made. And that was in 1982. And since then, my interest in creating a video game for the Atari 2600 began. Three years later, in 1985, I bought a Commodore 64, and with it, I learned how to program a computer. The programming language that I learned, of course, was uh, basic. I liked programming a computer so much that I decided to study computer science. In 1994, I started working as an IT manager for our fin financial institution, where even in these times, they still use program made in BASIC. Then, after programming in BASIC for more than 30 years, I found out that you could make games for the Atari 2600 using a programming language called Batari BASIC. So I reviewed the Batari BASIC manual for several months and went I was ready to begin the game. I looked for one that was not previously created for the Atari 2600 
and I remember that the N was never ported to it, so I picked that one. It took me four months to create that thing. Now that I have created the N, I finally understand how the Atari 2600 really works. Mm. Yeah. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a very good game. Um, and, and you use Batari Basic to make it. Um, and this uh -huh. is your first your first uh, Atari game that you made? Yes, it, it's my first game. Okay. Um, um, so, considering this is your first game uh, created for the 2600, and now it's being released on cartridge, uh, what would your 13-year-old self think about uh, uh, when you first got an Atari 2600 for Christmas? What would you think about now that you have made a game what would what would he say <laughs> okay i i think he would think that a great challenge has been uh, achieved having the opportunity to play his own atari 2600 game on the same console that his parents gave him 38 years ago is something that no one could ever imagine might happen now i know how these games were made and now i realize that the work that other people went through so that children like me had a lot out of fun. I really thank all of them. Yes. Yeah, a lot of work goes into these games. That's your that. your game is extremely close in gameplay to the arcade version. Uh, oh. Did you have to make any sacrifices other than reducing the number of enemies uh, from eight to six for the for the game? Well, redu reducing the number of enemies from 8 to 6 was a sacrifice that I had to do to avoid the blinking of sprites, the flickering, that appear on the screen, of sprites that appear on the screen at the same time. For the game logic, I needed more variables, so I had to use two of the 10 players available in DPC Plus as variable. Even with those sacrifices, I was able to program the two versions of this game in only one 32K binary file. As you may know, the Konami version has a defense, has the defense bases above your spaceship, and the stern version has them below your spaceship. Both versions are included in the cartridge release as a bonus for those who buy it. Mm. Very nice. Um, so the, the packaging artwork for this is drawn by David Exton. Um, how did you come to work with David for, on the packaging? Okay. When I was, uh, talking with Albert Jaruso for the release of the card, to make a release for the cartridge, he then contact, uh, uh, David Exton, uh, to create the, the artwork and he offered to do the, the work. So Albert created a private uh, conversation between the three of us, and we kept uh, in touch for a few months working with the artwork. He also made the instruction book and the game box. He, he made everything. And everything mm -hmm. was perfect. Yeah. Well, that's great because the artwork is astounding. It, yeah. It looks so beautiful, and, and the, the, the shadowed... Mm -hmm. menacing scary creature in space is just beautiful at the top of the cover there um are there are there any plans uh for continuing to develop your second arcade port uh stratavox and possibly working on more games for the 2600 now that the end has been released on cartridge yes um i'm working with uh Box to add voice using the Atari Box Plus. I already nice. ordered it and I have it. Okay. I, I hope to have the new version ready very soon. Uh -huh. oh, uh, excellent. Uh, the, uh, this uh, starter box was also never ported to the Atari 2600 and I would like it to also be released in cartridge. Uh, Besides that, I also I'm also working in a third arcade port called Tomahawk 777 oh. version five. 
and I hope to have it finished very soon. This game was also not ported to the Atari 2600. It's, it's a very good game uh, that I, 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 I wish uh, to be released very soon. I want to be it to be released very soon. Oh, wow. Yeah, another uh -huh. obscure arcade game. Uh, looking forward to seeing that one. Um, I, I, I love Stratavox. Uh -huh. um, the, ga the game Stratavox because there have been games made like Stratavox, Bandits, uh -huh. for the Commodore 64 and yeah. Apple and, and Atari, and I love, love Bandits. So it's, uh -huh. it's great to be able to play a game like Bandits, where it got it originally yeah. from, like Stratavox on uh -huh. the 2600. So thank you so much for making Stratavox. And thank you for making The End, both amazing, amazing games. And it was okay. very nice talking with you. And is there thank anything you. else you would like to, to say? Yes. Uh, I like to. I would like to thank uh, Albert Jaluso for all his help and the opportunity uh, to release The End at the Atari H store and to release the cartridge. To David Exton for his excellent uh, artwork of The End, including the instructions and the game box. To S. Ramirez for playtesting The End. And to you, James and Tanya, for all your help and support, for playing my games in your shows, and for inviting, <laughs> yeah, and for inviting me to participate in this event. Uh, finally, I'm pleased to announce that The End was selected to be played on season 11 of the Atari 2600 High Score Club, managed by oh. Mr. Uh, Bocelli. And it will be nice. played by the end of this month of May. So thanks to Mr. Bocelli for selecting my game. And I invite all of you to join the club and have some fun. Okay? Thank you very much yes. for, to all of you. Yes, that's, that's excellent. Uh, those high score competitions are so much fun. And I'm really happy when they include homebrew. Uh -huh. and, and that's that's so wonderful that your game is going to be played by yeah. so many people and and you'll see how good people will be at playing your game uh -huh. <laughs> i hope so that'll be a, that'll be a lot of fun so thank you okay. so much thank for you. coming on the show uh -huh. and uh, thank you so much for making the game thank you for the show and uh, bye -bye. i will see you in the atari age forums bye 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 That's excellent. And I'm, I'm so glad he was able to come on. Um, um, and I prepared the questions beforehand for him. Oh, okay. So that he would he obviously had them written out and, nice. and prepared. And it, it was great to be able to, to do that because otherwise... And to it, have him on. Yeah. To have him on because otherwise it would be very difficult because to do it impromptu. Yes. You know, his English is much better than my Spanish. Oh, my. Which is zero. <laughs> yeah. Zero Spanish. So we it's... We need to work on that, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, incredible that we were able to uh, make that happen. Mm -hmm. that's, that's just wonderful. Um, so we are going to move on to uh, Ryan M Whitmer okay. with Magical Fairy Force. Um, and, oh this, oh, this box is heavy. Oh, my goodness. Oh, shit. <laughs> Should have turned that off. Sorry. Did you just pull out the cartridge I it on? I did just pull out the cartridge. Only a new 7800. You destroyed it. <laughs> no, probably not. Sorry about that. a possibility. <laughs> <laughs> um, I knew that was going to happen once. I've been trying the oh, whole time. I'm like, turn it off. 5,200 carts weigh a lot. Oh, that's true. Yes, I'm so they do. used to. They're heavy. 2,600 They're big. games. Yes. Oh, oh sneezy, sneezy cat. cat. Oh, sneezy cat. Did that you wake you up? Do you want to say hi? Oh. You want me to drive so you let's uh, unbox Come here. Uh, Come here, this. Hi. Oh, uh, no, not that one. There we go. Come here. Who is this? So, the Magical oh, Fairy Force, this? great cartoonish uh, cover there with all the players and the enemies on it. Uh, uh, retro looking, styled game mm -hmm. box, 5200 style. And uh, Ryan Whitmer is one of the uh, few people programming specifically for the 5200. Mm. Because it is not uh, up a well played, not as played as often as other some of the other systems. Mm. Let's take a look. 
at the cartridge here. Lovely. 5,200 cartridge. Look, Look at this at big that. thing. Massive. Ugh, it's so heavy. <laughs> it's so heavy. Yeah. That's yeah, wonderful. Massive. Let's put yeah, that there. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet is he cat. being cute? Yeah, oh, he is. He is. He's very sleepy. Oh, this sleepy. manual. Oh, it's a thick one. It is a thick one. I think manual. I was uh, warned about this one. So <laughs> this one's a big one. So let's take a look. Here you go. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. The ca cat's just settled. Oh, I know. I'll give you a bit more time. <laughs> There's Magical Fairy Force, the cover. Let's see if there's a nice page I can flip to because he's got all the different characters in here. Oh, you're sweet. There we go. There's some of the characters. Looks great. Yes, I, I will have to. We did play this on the show. We did, and did... I'll have to remind myself because you can play different, you play different characters and you have different opponents. Yes. Now we played this on emulator last mistaken. time because we, I didn't have an operational 5200 at the time. And um, pretty much you shoot everything. The second button uh, launches the special attack. Mm. So those are the basics for it. So we're gonna get Ryan Whitmer on the line if he's still with us and still awake and still willing to talk to us. Uh, oh geez, where is he? An hour and 15 minutes afterwards. It's not that much later, but it's an hour and 15 minutes still. I don't know where he is. We'll find out maybe. Uh, hopefully in the continent of North America <laughs> or South America, so it's not too crazy. Okay, come on, Kitty. Yes. Um, Let me get this in. Um, I'm not sure how to. Oh, now, geez. did I ever. Yeah, you're good. Power it up. Will it go on Oh, it won't. I'm going to switch it over before okay. I. Um, Connect? Do anything. Okay. Yeah. We're Please. just dealing with uh, technical adjustments, uh, yeah. not issues. Adjustments. I have to switch. I have to switch over. You should show. Um, oh, you don't have Everything? it pointy. Yeah, you should no, show, show all the, the consoles. I can show it with the webcam. Yeah, but you're just not switched over. I would have pointed it towards you. Oh uh, God. You've switched back, so that's okay. We can still, we'll show it at the end. Yep. So we don't delay. We'll show all the consoles. Yeah. So it should, uh, once I go over to video, it should be on the VCR, which the 5200 uh, 50, is, is routed through. through because it's an unmod unmodded 5200. Gotcha. There we now, go. There we go. Okay. So don't do anything yet because we want to get gotcha. Ryan on the line. I'm not, no, I have tested it. The Genesis pad does work. I, I made sure to test it because I wasn't going to haul out my 5200 uh, and not have it work. Um, there we go. I've got him. There it is. I'm going to start the call. And let's get that screen going when he gets on the line. This is very special that I've dusted off the 5200 <laughs> just for this. Just for Magical Fairy I don't have very many 5200 games. Um, and it is a very key, very finicky system. That's for sure. Um, because of many factors. <laughs> what are we'll, some of those we'll, factors? <laughs> well, one of the factors yeah. is the controllers. Okay. I think they're, they're quite notorious. Yeah, they, they fall are apart. analog controllers. Mm. Uh, that's not why they're bad. There's tons of game, uh, consoles with analog controllers. Ryan is unavailable. Why would you do this to us, Ryan? <laughs> why? I'm having some def give it, I'm having some def te technical difficulties. That's fine. We have uh, things to talk about with the 5200. Just type when you're good again good in the go. chat. Mm. Uh, the controllers are notoriously terrible. Okay. I have six controllers and zero of them work perfectly. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't think there are really any surviving controllers mm. that have not been modded that still work 100%. The second thing is the console's massive. 
it is we were talking about that unnecessarily I think massive james has a vhs that it's running through and i think the 5200 is like equal in size almost <laughs> as big as the vhs oh. player is it's it's, it's massive it's exact same size as yeah. this massive sony uh vhs old player. vhs yeah yeah um another factor is it a bigger than ps5 i don't own a ps5 it is yeah. really big. Yeah. Is it the biggest one? Does the Neo is a Neo Geo bigger? Neo I think it's Geo's the ne- big, isn't it? I think it's the biggest one. Mm. I don't know. We're gonna call uh, Ryan again because he says he's ready now. Let's give that a try. Calling, calling, calling. Laser active is the largest. Laser active. Nobody has laser active. <laughs> I don't even know what th- I've heard of that, but I don't. I don't know what it is. What does it play? I'm guessing laser discs. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Calling Ryan. 3DO. No, 3DO is very small. I have a 3DO. It's it's big. But I mean, it's, it's not big, as big as a. It's about the big as a 7800, I think. Mm. Hangouts isn't cooperating with me. Would you like to do? Skype or Zoom? Uh, Zoom. Um, would Zoom be good? Because I can do Zoom. I'm ready for Zoom. Zoom should work. Okay. Uh, how am I going to give you my Zoom account? Can you just invite oh. him? I will send it to you through... Are you still on... Um, The Atari Age uh, Discord. I'll send it to you through there. I mean, you're always on there, so you should be. I will send it to there. There we go. I'll hang up on this and load up Zoom. Just add me as a contact on Zoom. Yeah. And then I will approve it and then we will connect on Zoom. Um, another problem or issue with the 5200, not this one, but the original, the initial run of 5200 had four ports, four mm-hmm. joystick ports, which is great. It's wonderful. But also, um, the power hookup was the most insane thing that you could ever think of. Mm. They, I mean, it's clever, but also insane at the same time. Mm. What uh, they did was ran the video signal and the power through the same cable. What? <laughs> yeah. It, Is that like powering your console through your HDMI cable? Is that like... It's similar to that. That's yes. weird. Um, and I have tried... I've hooked it up that way before. Mm. I have, I have a four port and it's a special breakout box. And so the, the, you plug it into the wall. How does this work again? It's very strange. You plug it into the wall and the video, I can't remember, but it, it does work like that. Mm -hmm. And there's an audible and visual zap when you plug in the cable, like it sparks. So they quick. I don't know how this passed Q uh, uh, Q and A, Q and A quality oh, assurance. Quality QA. assurance. Q A. Q A. Not Q and A. Q and A question. Time. Question and answer. Um, quality assurance. Yeah, because the first time somebody plugged it in, it would have done that zapping. That's crazy. I love. <laughs> no, plug it to the wall last. Ah, oh, see, there's the problem. Anyway, they they did it on uh, Angry Video Game Nerd, and it zapped there too. I have experienced the zap. I thought he was exaggerating yeah. when he did it on that that skit show. Obviously, yeah. he exaggerates everything. Yeah. Um, but uh, it does zap. So people yeah. are saying I'm doing it wrong. I don't have the manual, so I just plugged <laughs> yeah. it in any way I could. Yeah. They obviously had no QA with that controller. Yeah. Yeah. Like usually when you do quality assurance. You run things through for a while, or you have now oh, they have yeah. machines to do it. Like you would get a yeah. machine to move it back and forth, up and down, press yeah. all the buttons a hundred or a thousand or a ten thousand times. Yeah. 
Um, it's like Ikea with their chairs. They always had that. Do you remember that? This guy sitting down over the, and over the again? The robotic machine that would just okay. smack the chair constantly. Or sit up and lay down. Yeah. Uh, it's a shame so they don't still show nothing that. Nothing from Orion yet. Um, Hopefully, uh, or do you, do you, you should contact him. Has he tried to, uh... Well, he could uh, send me his email address as well through either publicly on <laughs> Twitch, which no. I may not recommend. No, I wouldn't recommend Unless that. it's a throwaway account. Yeah. Or he can send it to me through uh, Discord, which he says is online right now. I don't know if he's seen my message. He might might have added you as contact. Can you contact him now? Uh, it's not there yet. Oh, it's not in your contacts? Yeah. Love all these applications. They're all a little different too, which is really obnoxious. I know, but I understand how they like. You don't want everybody contacting you out of the blue and starting to chat with oh, you. Oh no, that's fair annoying enough. you. So yeah, they have to lock them enough. down to people you just know. Yeah. Earlier ones didn't work like that. Sorry, nothing likes my Linux machine. Oh. Oh Linux. Oh, see that's yeah. Uh, what? So that's Google's okay. not working. Well, Hangout, so Hangouts neat. works through a browser, so you would have, you would think that that would be like fine, but it yeah. also has to interface with. What about with, Skype? Uh, we can do Skype as well. Um, we can try it. If you have Skype. I mean, that's Microsoft, so. I don't know uh, if Skype's made for Linux. If they've made a port. Uh, Fifty two hundred was a red hot exciting system back in the day. Slack works on Linux. It's a snap. What? <laughs> <laughs> um, I like the 5200 quite a bit personally crossbow says I mean it's just the controllers everything else is is, is fine right I, I've got a multi-cart for my 5200 um, and, but I just haven't this is the first time I've actually hooked it up properly yeah and it, it looks when it fun. says press 1 or press 2 oh well, you press 1 or 2 right on there, there. Yeah. okay um Not played on a 5200 ever i don't think Fa phaser so. cat games so are we, are we giving up or do you have skype you have a skype like client there is linux skype but it does not work for everyone's setup mm. Mm. mike soul says we may have to just show off the game and the packaging we actually showed off the packaging already so I take disc Discord doesn't have a video. I am not set up for that. Oh, I see. <laughs> I have I've done no prep for that whatsoever. Okay. So that would be a, a big mess. Okay. Well, because I would need it installed on your laptop. I managed to start a Hangouts video call, but I can't seem to add you to it. Oh, oh okay. maybe you can add him. Uh. Give it a try. I don't see him. Like he's not calling me. Um, Can you look him up? Oh, I have him on here. Oh. It's right here. Try calling him. I have. Oh. Uh, I can try again. Try again. Yep. Does it hurt? It, it won't hurt. hurt. The worst it can do is not get us ahead anymore. <laughs> and we already are. And that's perfectly fine. So we'll try and call Ryan once more. Um, if that doesn't work, we're just going to forge ahead and, um, maybe he can answer questions in the chat. Yeah. Right. 